all guys um we are going to present from bird which is improving bird sentences embeddings with prompts um so um bird and robert a has been very successful pre-trained models that are used for nlp tests however those models are performing weekly on sentence embeddings uh, we'll go over the problems with Bert and Robert A in more detail for the next few slides. Um, however, previous Bert models can perform better with the help of the template. So, um, prompt Bert, which is the model introduced in this week's paper, is a prompt based contrastive learning method with a template denoting leverage the power of Bert in an unsupervised setting. Uh, this model achieves much better performance than the previous BERT models. The table here is demonstrating the statistics for the Spearman correlation and sentence and the isotropic of static token embeddings average and last layer average. Um, the Spearman correlation is the average of correlation on STS 12. That's 16 STS that's B and SICK. Reading from the table, we can notice that Bert based of case and Robert A based significantly harm the sentence embedding performance by comparing the experiment correlation for static token embeddings, average and last layer average for the models. And sentence and and it's so tropy is that it makes the token embeddings so occupy a narrow core, resulting in a high similarity between any sentence pair. However, sentence anisotropy doesn't take a significant role in the performance. The static token embeddings average achieves better sentence embedding performance overall. This visualization shows the token embeddings with different biases. For frequency bias, the darker the color, the higher the token frequency. For subword and case bias, yellow represents subword and red represents the token containing capital letters. What this visualization demonstrates is that the three pre-trained models are highly biased by the token frequency subwords and case. Those embeddings biases harm the sentence embedding performance and it is shown in the table below. The number of, on the table are Spearman correlation and all three models improve when elim eliminating the embedding biases. Hi, um, I'm going to briefly uh, talk about prompt based sentence method to obtain sentence embeddings. By uh, using the sentence embedding, that's the mask language, we can use the original BERT layers. This method can also avoid the embedding biases when we represent sentences from mask tokens. There are two problems while implementing the prompt based sentence embeddings. One, how to represent sentences with the prompt, and two, how to find a proper prompt for sentence embeddings. Let's see the first one, how to represent sentence with the prompt. Here we are going to see two methods to represent a sentence with a prompt. For example, we have a template uh, like X means mask. Then we map X to X prompt with the template. Then we feed X prompt to the pre-trained model to generate sentence. Here is one method to use the hidden vector of mask token as sentence, h equal to h of mask. But for the second method, we get the top k tokens, then find the weighted average of these tokens. The second method is actually more conventional than the first method, but there are few disadvantages like, firstly, due to the sentence embedding from averaging tokens, it still suffers from biases. Secondly, we 
weight averaging makes the bird how to fine tune in downstream task. So for these reasons, we use the sentence with the prompt by first method. Uh, could you move to next slide? Then next is prompt search. For prompt-based task, one key challenge is to find templates. There are three methods to search for templates. They are manual search, template generation-based T5 and OptiPrompt. We use Spearman correlation as a main metric to evaluate these templates. For manual search, we need to handcraft templates. And to search templates, we divide the template into two parts, like relationship tokens, which denotes the relationship between X and mask, and previous tokens. Then finally, we greedily search for templates based on our relationship tokens and prefix tokens. For template generation based on T5, there is a method to automatically generate templates according to the sentences and their labels. And the results were better than the manually searched uh, templates. But the main issue here is the lack of label tokens. One way to solve the problem is to transform the sentence embeddings to like a text classification task by classifying the definition sentence to its word. Based on this, in this research, they try to generate 500 templates. And after evaluation, the best Spearman correlation is 64.75. Next method is OptiPrompt. This method replaces the discrete template Plate with a continuous one. To optimize the continuous template, we freeze the BERT parameters and the continuous template is uh, initialized by manual templates embeddings, like token embeddings. Compared to the input manual template, the continuous template can increase the correlation from 73 to 80.90. Uh, next one is prompt-based contrast your learning. Recently, contrast your learning successfully uses the power of BERT in sentence embeddings. But the challenge here is how to construct proper positive pairs. There are four augmentation methods. They are adversarial attack, token shuffling, cutoff, and dropout. These methods can be used in the while initializing the input embeddings. The idea is to use the different uh, templates to represent the same sentence, which helps the model to produce more positive pairs. In order to reduce the influence of templates on sentences, there's a way to denoise the information. We first calculate the corresponding sentence embeddings, and then we calculate the template bias by directly feeding BERT with the template and same templates portion IDs. Here's a formula for that. Uh, next, uh, Amir will explain more about the experiments and results. Thank you. Yeah. So in this research, uh, there, there are two types of experiments. One is in the non-fine-tuned setting where uh, the authors have uh, compared the performance of the original bird uh, sentence embeddings with other uh, embedding models like GLOVE and uh, BERT flow and BERT whitening. So BERT flow and BERT whitening both are two uh, methods where they've tried to convert the anisotropic distribution of sentence embeddings to a smooth isotropic distribution. And in the fine-tuned setting, uh, this, this corresponds to unsupervised and supervised results that are obtained by fine-tuning BERT with uh, downstream tasks. And here the results are compared with different sentence uh, embedding models like uh, is as BERT InfoSent, which was made by Facebook, Universal Sentence Encoder, Sentence BERT, which is SBERT, and contrastive learning-based methods such as SimCSC and Concert. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so for the experiments, the, uh, uh, they have experimented with uh, seven common STS datasets. So STS is semantics textual similarity, where uh, which is the task of determining how similar two pieces of text are. 
and uh, the sentence pairs are scored from zero to five to indicate the semantic similarity, zero being the lowest and five being the highest. So the authors have used STS tasks, the data sets that were available in STS tasks from 2012 to 16. Then there's an STS benchmark data set, which contains around 100,000 English sentences that were uh, collected from image captions and news headlines. And then there's a SIP corpus, sentences involving compositional knowledge, which has uh, sentence pairs and so uh, each sentence pairs is annotated with two dimensions. That is how related those sentences are and the entailment that if uh, it's another form of relation between those sentences. So these were, and these were downloaded using the semi tool. Next slide please. Yeah. So first we'll discuss the non point tune setting, the results corresponding to that setting. So over here, uh, the bird based uncased model has been compared with love embeddings and the bird flow and bird whitening along with the proposed approach. So as you can see, uh, for the bird model, they've compared the average of the last layer, the static average, which is basically the average of the embedding layer, then the first and last layer average. So the last average, first last average are basically the encoder layers, the first and last layer of encoder. And then the static remove biases average is basically the embedding layer, but removing the tokens that introduce bias. So you can see that glove embeddings average are outperforming the BERT static embeddings, except for the case where we calculate the static remove biases average. And uh, the prompt based BERT method, which uh, introduces the where the prompt is calculated with the manual approach or a manual and opti-prompt approach, it outperforms uh, all the other approaches given in the table. Uh, and this is in the non-fine-tuned setting. That is, it hasn't been fine-tuned on any downstream task. So you can see that using templates can substantially improve the results of original BERT on all data sets. Uh, next slide, please. And in the fine-tuned setting, uh, the, the proposed approach has been compared with unsupervised models as well as supervised models. So in the unsupervised models, you can see that the prompt BERT performance is uh, unstable. So the authors have con calculated the results over 10 iterations, and then they've uh, calculated the standard deviation. So you can see the plus minus metric over there. And you can still see that it outperforms uh, all the uh, SOTA, state-of-the-art methods like SIMCSC and CONCERT, which are contrastive methods. Uh, this is because of the template denoising method that the authors have introduced. And in the supervised models also, PROMBERT, uh, again, uh, outperforms the rest of the sentence embedding and sentence encoder models. So we can also learn that uh, the prompt BERT method uh, can leverage unlabeled data and still outperform the other models. So next slide. So in the conclusion, this paper points out that the poor performance of original BERT on sentence embeddings is not due to anisotropy, but instead it's because of the static token embedding biases and ineffective use of the original BERT layers. To counter this problem, a new prompt based sentence embedding method was proposed to avoid these biases and leverage the pre trained knowledge in original birth layers by uh, introducing a mass language modeling objective. And it significantly improves the performance of the original birth. Furthermore, the sim a simple trick of template denoising was also used to improve the prompt based method, which out perform state-of-the-art sentence embedding methods like sentence bot and same CSE. And we can, and uh, it also gives a direction where in the future uh, for sentence classification or text classification tasks, a uh, following workflow can be used of mass language pre-training uh, followed by unsupervised sentence embedding pre-training 
that is pre-training the BERT model again on the uh, on the in-domain data or target task data, and then perform normal supervised fine-tuning. So this could become the standard approach for text classification in the field. Thank you. If any questions, please.